Uh, on Tuesday evening, we host uh, Preston North End at St Mary's. Now, this is the rearranged fixture following that fire on the industrial estate early last month. I think it was episode 268 that we spoke to Ollie, who was from the podcast called The Butter Pie Podcast. So we've got a pretty good <laughs> insight then. I'm just thinking, Steve, is this a better time to be playing them? Is it, I know they lost at the weekend, didn't it? So it looks like they're out of, of the playoffs and, and probably don't have anything to play for now. And, and I can't help but think that maybe we're in a, a slightly better place as well. Yeah, definitely on uh, on both counts. Um, I mean, Preston, as you say, lost to, lost to home to Norwich yesterday, one nil. Um, I mean, gave Huddersfield a hiding in midweek, but I think that's you kind of take that on its merits. Um, also, drew with Watford um, and lost to Birmingham, so they've they've kind of stuttered the last last three or four games really, and that's put them uh, eight points off the playoffs with four to play. So I think with the best one in the world, that's probably their season over, um, especially with their minus one goal difference. Um, so, yeah, I think good time to play them. Um, sounds from from what I've what I've kind of been picking up on Twitter, that they may have may have sort of picked up a couple of um, key injuries. So as a result, they're they're looking a little bit disjointed um, compared to, say, four or five weeks ago when. Um, when they're on a really good run and looking like they might might push into that top six, um, so yeah, I mean it's it's there there on on the table for us to take, I think. So I know you mentioned it earlier, Alfie, but just so it's in the right bit on YouTube, um, are we expecting to see any changes? I mean, Russell Martin was kind of alluding to the the, the fact that there might be a couple. Um, it, it's going to be a big week with the game on Tuesday and then Saturday too. Yeah, as I said earlier, he always, you know, sometimes he tries to throw us off the scent and, and say, yeah, we might have to change a few things. But he was very categorical this time that there will have to be changes. I think he, you know, he, he didn't want to change the team from winning against Coventry to Watford. I think he wanted to keep that momentum, keep that flow. But I think in doing that, he's accepted he will have to make some, um, you know, on Tuesday. So the ones I mentioned earlier, the guys who, you know, they probably should be starting games anyway, and they probably would do in most teams, Jan Benrick, Stuart Armstrong. Like, I, I would be very surprised if they don't come in. I'm hoping Brian Manning's in with shout, but but what you don't want to do is you don't want to make too many changes. So I don't think there'll be wholesale, you know, five, four, five, six. I think it might just be two or three. Those two guys coming in, and then maybe someone in for David Brooks as well. Um, I think you know David Brooks has probably not taken the chance he's had to really nail himself mm-hmm. down as the guaranteed third forward because you're going to play Adam Armstrong and Chadams in the playoffs. That goes about saying. But there's a space up for grabs there, and um, between him, Ryan Fraser. You know, it would have been Sam Adozi a couple of weeks ago, but he looks like he's a little bit further off now for, for whatever reason. So, yeah, I could see Jan, Stewie and um, and a third forward coming in, but I, I don't think it'd be too many more than that. Brooks is an interesting one, isn't it, Glenn? We were having this conversation yesterday in the pub mm. afterwards. He, he kind of came in and and I, I, he had a lot to play for. And, and obviously there was the, the the chance of Wales still going to the, um, the Euros, wasn't it? And it just felt like yesterday it, it, it's not quite the player that we saw or, or what we thought we might get from him. There's a hell of a lot of ability there, but he does seem to have this knack, if you like, of disappearing out of games where you don't notice him for half an hour. Um, yeah, I mean, I I still think we're we're lucky to have him and Definitely. his his goal involvements. I mean, he, you know, he got an assist yesterday. Um, I think he's I think he's possibly thought of a little bit harshly because he tends to disappear from games for half an hour. And it's the same with the other loanee from Bournemouth, Joe Rothwell, is exactly the same. Mm. But it's it's less excusable for him because he's in the centre of midfield. Um, you know, if you're on the wing and you don't get given the ball, then, you you know, you're obviously not going to do much. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, Brooks needs to get involved in the game more. But, you know, as with any forward player, you need, you need to be given the ball. I don't necessarily see him making loads of mistakes, or or anything like that, um, and, and I th- I think he's been okay. But um, he's yeah, as I say, his, his output has been okay. Um, as has you know Sam Adozi, who's as you say has gone gone further down the pecking order. I'd mm-hmm. certainly rather have Brooks in the team than than Camel Dean, simply because you're more likely to get a goal or an assist out of him. Um, so uh, so no, I think I think I think he's been okay, um, all things considered, but. Uh, I mean, you're with the best one in the world. You're not going to get a Premier League team, which, like it or not, that's what Bournemouth are. Mm. You're not going to get a Premier League team loaning you a player who's going to be a world beater every week. You know, he he's not in their side for a reason, and I, I dare say it's because he he doesn't put in many 
90 minute performances, which is obviously what you need at uh, at Premier League level. But he's yeah, I'm I'm sort of like perfectly happy for him for him to be here and um I have no problem if he stays in the team to be honest. Hmm. Does anybody want the opportunity to change their score prediction for this game, by the way? Because I've got the ones that we did back in uh, episode 268. If anybody does, it means that I we're going to have no to redo idea. the we're going to have well, to redo the graphics. graphics. We're going to yeah. have to redo yeah. the graphics and social media. I've got them here. Um, it just needs a bit of work. So, Alfie, you had us down for a two-one win. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glenn, you also said two-one. Um, Steve, you got a three-two win down for this Ooh. one. Uh, Ollie, <laughs> who was with us from the Preston Pod, said uh, a two-one Saints win. Uh, interestingly, and I went for a one or draw, so I think I'm going to change that maybe to a, a 3 1, perhaps, um, or maybe a 1 0. I, th- I think we'll definitely win. Are you all right with your Steve? You're right with the 3 2? Uh, no, I'm going to change that. <laughs> no. I I think, yeah, I, th- I think this is this is the time where we get a clean sheet against someone vaguely competitive. Um, so yeah, 2 0. Okay, so the new graphic is on. Uh, if anybody's watching live, by the way, um, do stick your score predictions uh, in the comments.